Hello, puppies and kittens. We're going to open with a, uh, a super chat. We've got $10 Australian. And this is coming from PhD. Tony says, I'm trying to think, uh, trying to parse the terms intelligent design and think being in the same sentence. Now I have a headache. I have deducted a $10 penalty from this super chat. Thank you very much for that. And the other opening comment will be from Erica. Guts it given. Well, what the hell was that article? What was going on with that? What, what did, where did that come from? Out of left field from Beckley. I couldn't believe it when I saw it. But I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, it's it's like I said in my email to him and in the video that I'm cooking up on the subject, I haven't seen an article dripping with so much vitriol come out of the DI in quite some time. But wow, Beckley really is raising the bar at least somewhere, isn't he? Vitriol from someone famous for himself tone policing others is the best. That's part of right. It. That's right, Dapper. Isn't it? Isn't it interesting that he spent so many articles getting on Dave's case for his mean language, and then the first thing he does Jeez. come out the gate when he thinks he can pick on someone smaller. That's when he decides to to you know there, act like a jackass. I couldn't believe it. There was a header about me in one of his that said, "Seriously, what is wrong with this guy?" <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the very first of his like eight uh, blog post response was just being like, "Wait, Dave is so mean He's to me." Such a jerk face. <laughs> yeah. He's so mean. And it's funny because like I while I was reading the the newest article, I picked up on a little bit of language that I think he tried to crib directly from you, Dave. Like he would be like, this is so embarrassing for mm -hmm. them. And I was like, wait a second. Now wait mm -hmm. just a second. Invitation is the most sincere form of flattery, isn't it? You're a trendsetter, Dave. <laughs> I do my best. Yeah. I, I think that the, like these outbursts are like they're it's really starting to weigh on them. Like what I'm doing, what some of you guys are doing, like just oh, yeah. the DI has never looked dumber than they do right now. <laughs> and it's really starting to uh, affect them, I think. Well, well then let's, let's get down to business on this. So a handful of us were named in an article that was posted by some guy I never heard of. Uh, <laughs> one of one of the page shells, one of the professional scientists who is actually a scientist, but also uh, rejects evolution in an amusing way. Uh, so this guy, Gunter, what was it? Beckley, whatever. Beckley. Beckley. Gunter yeah. Beckley. Gunter, Gunter Beckley. Beckley. Yeah. Uh, one of the things he said in this article uh, that he did, and he names all of us here present. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and he, he cited that, that we were just terrible, awful people. And he, and he puts in this list and then follows that with, and other, what was it? It's a deplorable ilk. Deplorable ilk, yeah. Deplorable and they're, and ilk. they're deplorable ilk. They're so, ignorant chutzpah, really. Many of you in the chat may recognize yourselves as deplorable ilk. Welcome. <laughs> so what had happened was that there's a young Earth creationist group called uh, 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 Genesis Apologetics, and they made this ridiculous yes. movie out of all the old school crap that they always come up with. And uh, Eric and I did a, uh, did a, did a rebuttal of that video. And uh, regarding the Genesis Apologetics movie that we thought was so laughably stupid and deliberately dishonest, he said it was quite well done and well researched, certainly not without errors, but raising many valid points against the mainstream view on human evolution. Many valid points. Like what? Is my question. Like, I, I, again, I, I have this in, in my video and I said this to him directly via email. What was the good point? Was there one? Because I didn't see a single one when we went through that. And I, I annotated the book version of that exact little video that has even more wrong with it. Contested Bones by Sanford and Roop. Roop being the one who, who had a finger in the pie of the Genesis Impact film, if you can call it that. And I, I struggle to come up with a single correct thing. Not like, I mean, I'm, I'm being hyperbolic here, but really and truly, there is not much to that text, just like there is not much to the video, uh, which is why Gunter is, is drilling down so hard on, on this one point that he thinks he has. And the spoiler, of course, is that he doesn't even have this one. He doesn't even have this one point that he had, he's helming it as, as his, um, as his uh, singular like life raft. Uh, well, now you've given away the spoiler. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I Was want... it a spoiler? Was it really a spoiler? Because I kind of feel like we all saw this coming. For for them to congratulate a young Earth piece like that, like, do you think that it's just that they failed so miserably at trying to appear 
uh, academic uh, that they're just sort of now pivoting. They're just like, well, let's just go full young earth apologetics. I, like, I actually think it's um, it's a wink to their young earth followers because the thing right. is, the DI doesn't like to take a position on the age of the earth and they do have old earthers among them, but they also have young earthers. But they mm -hmm. kind of keep that on the DL, right? They're like, yeah, I'm not so sure how old the Earth... Like James Tour when he was asked that. He was like, yeah, well, I don't know Timothy how old Wilson, the Earth is. Which right. is basically him yeah. saying he's a young Earther. Yeah, so, it's like... I don't think they're going to embrace young Earth, but I do yeah. think every once in a while they like to give a little wink to the young Earthers because, among them. Like, hey guys, look, they, we know that you're, you're part of our shtick, yeah. but we kind of have to... Be a little you, bit separate from. Well, them. they you used sacrifice to not do all that. intellectual integrity by doing that. So they, they just used like, to not. Yeah. They like it used to be the case that like Stephen Meyer used to very proudly say, "Oh, I would argue with Duane Gish on the airplane to you know evangelical events that the age of the Earth is actually quite old." You don't hear anyone saying that kind of stuff anymore. Mm -mm. They're just like age of the Earth. Ah, don't worry about it. Because old Earth creationism is basically extinct, right? There's yeah. one prominent organization, and even when I say prominent. Most Christians who are creationists have still never heard of like the um, the reasons to believe with Fuzz Rana mm -hmm. and um, is it Hugh, Hugh Ross? Ross? Hugh yeah. Ross, yeah. Mm -hmm. well, and it's they, consolidating yeah. the flock. No, I mean that's that's all this is is it's consolidating the flock to try to protect them from hemorrhaging any more like yeah. followers of these ideas, right? And like again, like they 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 have to turn it into a, a, a an us versus them thing where it's like the holy religious people and the evil secularists, like completely forgetting how many people out there are like science affirming religious folks. But if they draw the line in the sand, they can make themselves seem so holier than thou. And I I I think the that the 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 sand in the hourglass is just ticking down further and further on the DI as a whole. So they have to start appealing to these more extreme fringes to, mm -hmm. to keep it to keep them from like losing every follower that they've got. It's it's really quite sad. So I got a couple, I got another uh, super chat. This one from God's servant who says so the same system that evolved a human to live a hundred years evolved a fruit fly to live six hours. You really want me to believe that? LOL. And then some, you know, reference to his favorite fantasy folklore. But yeah, why would you have a fly live for a hundred years? I imagine flies would be quite bored of living a hundred years, especially since evolution is more efficient in shorter, ger shorter generations. Anyway, getting away from that distraction and back to the topic regarding our, our, um, our rebuttal video, uh, this guy Gunter said that that was the, that Erica and I were, beyond awful and <laughs> actually bonkers factually and embarrassingly bonkers. dumb yes now, that was also in there he 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 might I mean, he thinks he has a point so i'll give him that he thinks he has one but factually bonkers implies that there's something else there was a whole video where we rebutted an awful lot of stuff it wasn't Hours just this one there, there, there was one comment that he thinks he can defend. So he's going to try to defend that one comment. He's going to ignore everything else. He's going to say that, oh, yeah, it was well-researched and well, not without errors, which is the entire fucking thing. The whole thing is errors, but he's not going to acknowledge that. Okay? And so uh, if he dismisses referring to humans, or he, he, he dismisses uh, monophyletic class, classification, referring to humans, not referring to humans as a subset of apes, which we now know that we are. But instead, he imagines that transitional intermediates from early apes to modern men should be called ape men, which is like, like saying a mallard duck or a lion cat. Yep. You can have a half terrier and half collie, but you can't have a half collie and half dog. Well, you and know, that's, that's, what he's, that's what he's arguing for. And then after so that, after he says all that, he then says that we, all of us collectively, are embarrassingly dumb he said exactly that embarrassingly dumb yep those yep, were his that's, words that's the head of uh, one of the headings yeah well yep. it's in it's not just a heading it's it's such a poorly constructed little blurb because it's a heading and then it's also begins the immediate next sentence right. so it's it's poorly constructed but you know I, I i find it so interesting that he's spending all this time railing so hard against and in, in other blog posts too because in my video response to this I, I went ahead and i just wanted to see what else he had said in some of his other articles uh given he's he's so keen to throw a stone in a glass house i'm, I'm just curious to see how many mistakes he makes and indeed uh, it is a great many. 
he he flubs human evolution just about every single one of those blog posts that that I could find going back to 2022. Mm-hmm. Um, but but what I found most interesting was that he spends all this time and all these posts trying to rail against Homo habilis being a member of genus Homo. And other creationists will argue tooth and nail the exact opposite, that it is so clear that Homo habilis is such a different creature than Australopithecus. And of course, none of them ever cite Bill Kimball and Vilmore, um, Kimball and Vilmore's uh, Australopithecus Homo, the transition that wasn't, because the characteristics that define genus Homo are just an elaboration on previous, previous concepts that you see in earlier critters. This is ubiquitously understood in, in biological anthropology, but creationists have to pretend that it doesn't exist. And because they're pretending to, they're just ignoring half of the literature base, they will just argue till they're blue in the face the exact opposite points, sometimes using the same sources. It's ridiculous. It is absolutely yeah. ridiculous. And Aaron, it's- in that article, when when I said, when we were talking about how, you know, it's funny that creationists always they, they neglect to talk about the craniodental or postcranial features of Homo habilis. They want to focus on on um, very minute aspects of like sites instead of the actual morphology of the creature itself, of the animal itself. And then Gunter quotes us saying that and says, but what about the stone huts? He puts that in the article and he thinks it makes him look good. I couldn't believe it. It was so bold. Eric, well, make sure that, that he understands as he watches some of this, and he won't watch some of this, but other people who are friends. Of his are oh, I say, think he might. He he has nothing better to do with his time. His job is writing yeah. blog posts, so he gets paid to watch this kind the of stuff. Fact that My philosophy is who I am. creationists make rebuttal things where I'm supposedly destroyed. I'm destroyed <laughs> by somebody I never heard of, and it mm-hmm. happened three years ago. Yeah. and, and it Early retirement me. for Aaron. Yeah. The, the thing is, if they had a valid point, my allies, my associates, whatever you want to whatever you want to call them, other people in science communication or whatever would come to me and say, hey, there was this guy that made this thing and he said a lot of stupid shit. But there was one thing he said and he had a valid point and you need mm-hmm. to acknowledge that 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 happens on rare. Well, mm-hmm. not with creationists. It just <laughs> never happens with the creationists because right. they're just too <clears throat> dumb. But it, but it can happen. And I don't need to watch the video. If there was a valid point in it, my own, my own, you guys would come to me and say, hey, this guy pointed out something you said that, that that's wrong. You think you need to address it. And I will. That's the way that shit works. But not with creationists. One hundred percent. Being able to admit you're wrong is a huge strength, right? And like, I, I find it so insulting that he spent the, you know, large portions of the article being like, Arn and Erica will never admit a mistake. The, these deplore them and their deplorable ilk could never a- admit that they were wrong about something. It's like, are you kidding me? I'm wrong about stuff all the time. And I, owning your mistakes is the first step towards fixing them. So of course think, I'm happy to admit when I'm wrong. I feel like um, everyone here has made corrections on videos as a result of having made a mistake yeah. and done so publicly. Oh, for uh, sure. I put it in the description of, videos, yes. of the video where yeah. I made the mistake. If someone calls me out or I'll pin the comment that calls me out. Same. Yeah. yeah this, this guy quotes this guy quotes me on something where somebody called me out and there was a legitimate mistake. Uh the criticism that this guy that this guy Gunter brings up, he he cites, which everybody does, everybody who hates me cites this one article that was written by some guy with a hate boner against anybody that <laughs> any anybody he sees as a Jesus mythicist, anybody that he thinks believes that there was never a historic Jesus. So the guy writes hit pieces against everybody who holds that position. I don't hold that position, but he thought I did. So he wrote a hit piece against me. He wrote it. There was this guy, Tim O'Neill, who wrote this long ass article, 7,000 some odd words, I think it was, uh, telling how Aaron gets everything wrong. And the opening, the opening of that article, which, which Gunter cites, by the way. He links mm-hmm. to it. The opening of that article says that Aaron got all of the science right. <laughs> so we're talking about science. He quoted the article. He It's in the beginning, and Gunther missed the part where Aaron got all of the science right. And what the article was, mostly, he did have one legitimate issue that was relevant to what I was talking about and was in error. I had misunderstood uh, an, an article that was written by, by St. Augustine, and I was reading not the original article. I was reading a critique of it by the Catholic Church that was talking about how unfortunate it was that St. Augustine had this position 
which implies that we're living in a in a in a flat Earth. He said that you know he, that, that there, if there are people who live on the other side of the world, whose feet are opposite of ours, then they must have their own Jesus, their own flood, their own whatever. So from that article, you get the impression he's talking about another side of the world. There's this side of the world, and there's another side of the world. It sounds like there's a disc. It turned out that, and only historians would be aware of this. It seems. It turns out that if that that what Augustine believed in was 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 a globe where most of the world's on top and most of the world's on bottom, but no, that doesn't fit the description and it doesn't fit the critique that was coming from the Catholic Church. But that is the one one error he found that was relevant in the Aaron got everything wrong. There was another error in that he said that uh, in that I said that I described. Uh, Hieronymus Bosch as a monk because he joined a monastic organization, but it turned out after further research, after he'd been called out for it, I looked it up and realized that it was no longer monastic after he joined, so he's not actually a monk. Has nothing to do with what I'm talking about. And the, the, the vitriol that he wrote in about why I said that he was a monk and all of the other errors that he wanted to list we're all because of he he uh, Tim O'Neill imagined these agenda that this this motivation these opinions that I never expressed and do not have. So it is Tim O'Neill got all but one or two things wrong. Is so basically what that well, comes I've from. I've never done like the historical side of it, but uh, with and Beckley has never written anything about me specifically. Uh, but uh, Tim has a note like uh, Dave and I co-wrote the. Um, the scripts that were on Beckley and also the one that was on Meyer. And so Beckley came out and was defending himself and also Meyer's honor in the eight blog posts that Dave and I then responded to. We well, did were... Luskin first. First he did Luskin and then he did Meyer. He did, right, right. That's why yeah. he got the Luskin double. Luskin still exists. Yeah, he, he, actually, he's yeah. one of my first targets way back but, when. Um, but yeah, in, the, in those blog posts, so I guess like uh, those weren't, so he's never anything specifically about me, but we responded to those. And it is safe to say that Beckley got pretty much everything wrong. Every point of fact that was relevant to all of the arguments. You guys that are we talking made. over each other. What? What? Okay. He was the only one talking. Yeah, I'm sorry. You guys were talking over each other. Well, I don't think so. I think no, I was no. the only person talking. I wasn't talking yet. Yeah. <clears throat> well, at any rate, so that's the only uh, interaction sort of that I've had with Jackson. Beckley. What's going on? I'm Arn, so I think he's lagging. You might be lagging, Arn. <laughs> okay, go ahead. Continue. <laughs> well, that, that was it. Um, so, Erica, Jackson, I think you were saying something. Jackson, hold on. I want to jump in for a second. <laughs> Jackson, reset, reset your computer for me, please. Because you're talking over everybody else with a huge delay. I, I think it might be on your end, Aaron. I think, I think it's, it's your, your computer, end. Aaron. I'll reset. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so yeah. So what, what what I found interesting as well, like, is I I relooked over his Luskin, the 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 Luskin defense that that Beckley <laughs> put out that I was an assist on as well with the the script rebusting Gunter for that. And I found new things that were wrong that I didn't even catch the first time. Like at one point he talks about how the Dikika child's foot is the only like Australopithecus afarensis foot that we have. And then we have like one other metatarsal from afarensis that Carol Ward published on. But that's not true. There's an entire other set of, of metatarsals and phalanges that we have associated with Australopithecus afarensis. And like there's one that he makes in this article about Pobiner at all, like, and he does some really sneaky shit with it that I, again, I'm, I've talked about it in my video, but he basically is trying to say like the, the whole argument to take a quick step back that they're making in this, in this article that, that Gunter is trying to support Genesis apologetics on is that at the DK site in Olduvai, which Arn and I talked about, and I was talking about um, a, a Hyrax Hill site for the most part, that is the wrong site. Now I want to, kind of cover my ass here and explain why I got the site wrong. Genesis Apologetics' first citation is Hyrax Hill on their website. So yes, I, I clicked their first citation and was like, okay, this is, they're using the wrong site and kind of went with that. I should have been more careful and, and checked the other sites, the other <laughs> citations as well. But the problem is those two other citations either cost 200 plus dollars on, on the, through Cambridge, or they're just 
not available at my library or rare books you have to like order from the UK. See, um, Erica, your mistake was thinking that the organization who says that the scientific consensus is that every single dinosaur fossil was killed in the Chicxulub impact at the end of the Cretaceous might possibly have valid citations for their work. Why well, would you it, even think that? My mistake was clearly thinking that all their citations about a single site would be referring to the same site. Right. Yeah, like right. I, that's on me. I should have I should not have assumed so greatly of them. Uh, but it's interesting because Gunter in in defending Genesis of Allegetics and the argument that they're trying to make is that you find Hobo habilis bones at this DK site in Old Dubai. Then you also find Homo erectus bones at this site in Old Dubai at a much higher strata separated by a couple hundred thousand years. And what Gunter is arguing and what he's argued in the past, parroting Genesis Apologetics, is that it's very clear that Homo erectus hunted Homo habilis, and therefore Homo habilis is just a dumb bushmeat ape, right? Like it can't possibly be intelligent. It can't be a transitional species because of that. Okay, hold on. The stone hut that they say is a stone hut is not supported as a stone hut and hasn't since the, ni since the 1980s. It's a pile of basalt rocks that are the result of weathering. And because there, there's a heterogeneous mixture, right? That's my understanding of it. The basalt it like sticks up in these large piles. That was done by Potts. That was done by um, uh, two other guys that have done a 2017 and a 2023 paper respectively on the geology of this DK site. But moreover, the Homo habilis bones at the site are not butchered. The Homo habilis bones don't have any butchery marks on them. The other animal bones do. And so it's reasonable to conclude that the only critter at that site, at that strata at 1.9 million years ago, Homo habilis, was the tool user using the tools on the other organisms because they couldn't use tools. Not that this whole strata, which has been dated again across several hundred thousand years, were, were <laughs> pervading back in time. It makes absolutely no sense. Um, but to make matters worse, he cites this, this article from 2023 by Povener et al. And he's like, aha, at other sites that have homo habilis at them, you find butchery marks on hominin bones. And so I saw that and I was like, okay, well, that's kind of weird. Are the butchery marks on Homo habilis? Because I've never heard of this butchery marks on Homo habilis bones near this location. Nope. The bone was assigned to Homo erectus, the one he's proposing is hunting Homo habilis. That's amazing. It's that is just, one of the slimiest things I've ever heard. Right. And he calls it a Homo habilis locality to lead you to believe that because it's a Homo habilis locality, Homo habilis was the one being hunted. And he has it in a list of other kind of supports for Homo habilis being the victim of Homo erectus. But the bone that he's talking about has previously been assigned to Homo erectus and Paranthropus, never Homo habilis. So like it, it's just wrong. It's incorrect. It is a bold like mistake that he made in the article where he's saying that everybody else is making all these mistakes. Um, when in reality as well, the mistake that, and I, I take full responsibility for this, the mistake that I made, right? Calling, like associating, saying that Genesis Apologetics was calling uh, Hyrax Hill, was using Hyrax Hill as the site instead of this DK site. I only made that mistake because Genesis Apologetics made it first. And I didn't have access to the other, to the other, um, to the other sources. But other no, than that, we didn't, make, we didn't make any other mistakes in that video, nor in the any of the other Genesis Apologetics videos. But instead, Gunter wants to hone in on a, on a singular gotcha that he thinks he has and use that to bring the whole house down when his entire idea is also boldly not supported by the literature. It's incredible. Let me, let me just jump in here with a quote from his article. Uh, the reason I decided to waste my time in responding to the total garbage. I, should, I feel I should I read this in Trump's voice because that's the way it's written. Waste is time. This is all they do. Total garbage. In responding to the total garbage video by Aaron Ra and <laughs> Gibson Gibbons is that it implicitly also attacks me. This is because I had basically made the same point about the stone huts in Fossil Friday article last summer, uh, which also argues that we now know that more modern Homo erectus was a contemporary of Homo habilis and the latter rather an Australopithecine, which was not a handyman, but more likely the bushmeat game of real human hunters who built the stone huts and stone tools. So he's saying, am I, am I right in understanding that he's saying that Homo erectus was hunting and eating Homo habilis and that Homo habilis is not Homo at all, that it's you said that's a paranthropus, and maybe he's a, he's taking this as an australopithecine. No, what he's what he's saying is that at that site, 
Erectus was clearly hunting Havilis because you find them in the same like portion of the geologic column, but they're separated by hundreds of thousands of years. So there is zero link that you can actually draw at this site between with Homo erectus and Havilis being contemporaneous. Now they were probably contemporaneous at other sites, but the other site he, he uses, Kubifora, they also weren't contemporaneous at. They were also separated by hundreds of thousands of years there. And his support, the butchered bone that he claims is at a Homo Havilis locality, belongs to Homo erectus. So what is he, where is the support for any of the arguments that he's actually making? It doesn't exist. Oh, but Erica, okay. have you considered that if you accepted his position, then he would be right. And that's what he wants. No, oh, oh. he's not even right then. Even if we take his <laughs> idea to its conclusion, his very last statement where he, he gives the big gotcha, he reads a quote from me where I say, if you could find Homo habilis remains that were younger, like the oldest Homo habilis remains were, were younger than like, the first instance of a stone hut, that would be an interesting, an interesting find. But the oldest Homo habilis remains are 2.8 million years old, almost a million years older than this site. So even if ev you give him everything, that these are actually stone huts and that Homo erectus hunted habilis at this site, that still wouldn't preclude habilis as a transitional. So he has goose egg. He has no support <laughs> for anything that he's saying. Erica, with all due respect, you're only a paleoprimatologist and paleoanthropologist. He is a paleoentomologist. Yeah. I have a bin full of Miocene ape 3D printed teeth that I'm currently <laughs> sorting into maxillary and mandibular. Like it, so, it's so okay. It's so this is, if I'm if I may, so it's it's funny you mentioned that, Arn, because uh Beckley is also very bad in all of his like the invert paleontology <laughs> stuff that he wrote. Because Dave, Dave and I went through a bunch of that because most of most of what Beckley does is pre-Cambrian and Cambrian stuff for I'm sorry, I, I, I'm terribly confused because the Discovery Institute has him listed as a paleoentomologist. Well, he is. By yeah, trade, but they all do whatever they want. Right? Insects? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yep. So by trade, that's what he does. I've actually, so in my thesis, I actually came across one of the papers he did on beetle evolution because I did my thesis on, Cambrian. Uh, on beetle. Well, he works, <laughs> no. he works on Cambrian stuff now because he's... <laughs> writing blogs as his job, you know, so that's okay, what he does. But so, so you're, you're not saying that he's talking about pre-Cambrian insects. No, he just talks about pre-Cambrian fauna in okay. general. If, uh, so, careful with the fauna because he's going to be very firm that none of these very obviously so animals thing. are animals. That's the thing though. He's very, also very bad at like reading just kind of in general, I guess. Uh, one of my favorite examples of, of Beckley, I think it's just lying. I think it's just like fraud at this point. Um, is he uh, goes through the paper on Icaria wariutia, which is a late Ediacaran uh, stem by Laterian. At least this is our best estimate of what it is. Um, and he reads this paper, allegedly, and he says, aha, but have the authors of the paper considered that Icaria might be a protist? Because, and he cites this paper from 2015, this paper says that the tracks of certain rolling protists that exist today in the, the deep sea, like certain foraminifera, he's like, oh, they leave tracks that are similar to Icaria's. But wouldn't you know, the paper describing Icaria specifically mentioned that 2015 paper and said, actually, Icaria's tracks are nothing like this at all. And Beckley was like, why didn't they consider this? Well, I have good news. Yeah, they I mean did. You guys are giving them a lot of credit. Like it's it's very clear that they're just digging through minutia of esoteric science and selectively mm -hmm. lying about it. Like they don't think these things. They're just lying the whole time. That's why with my debunks, I try to focus on stuff where it's just like Luskin fumbled that one page and a half article and said that the article said that Lucy was a knuckle walker. <laughs> and I just show oh, one paragraph and go what? see Stern it says the opposite of that. And then I get the primary author on the article to give a statement saying Luskin is botched the whole thing. So it's like when they, when they respond to the Luskin debunk, they have to ignore all that stuff because it's the guy who wrote the paper saying this guy got, didn't understand the paper. Or fumbled well, the paper. Dave, so they, his, they avoid that and then they his just do this minutiae stuff. Though, his defense huh? of that Luskin situation was he said, because I reread his his Luskin response or whatever mm -hmm. to, to the video, and he was like, 
well, how can you expect a seven minute video to be accurate on like everything that it covers? Like that's the paraphrased version. And it's yeah. like, sir. <laughs> not being wrong. Yeah, like I'm so sorry, but that is not a defense. That's not the defense no. you think it is. Yeah. That's it's insane. the same with uh, Lat McLatchy on the Behe debunk, where I nailed them on the uh, on uh, rearranging the the polar bear tables. And his defense was like, "Well, there's not enough room to show the whole table." It's like they have no like that. I I, I work really hard to find these examples where the viewer can have zero scientific training because all that stuff that you guys are talking about, there's, it's a lot of esoteric stuff. And I know yeah. that you guys get worked up about it because it's your field. So I, I'm an, in a different position because I'm a generalist. So even I get overwhelmed sometimes with this esoteric stuff. And so I'm kind of in the middle and I'm like, Hey viewer, you can know nothing about science. I'm proving beyond a shadow of a doubt that they're lying about this, lying about this, lying about this. That's what I focus on. I think that's why I get under their skin uh, even more than some of you guys. Because it's like with you guys, they're just like, oh, a bunch of stuff that none of the readers have any chance of understanding. We can lie comfortably. You know, <laughs> it's like, yeah, it's yeah, a different I, track, I, I, you know. I, I have a agree. question about paleo entomologists, right? Because you know that meme where it's like, it's weird that it happened twice. That's the situation we're in with creationist paleo entomologists, right? Because not only does the Discovery Institute have a pet paleo entomologist, who likes to go outside of his specialty and get everything wrong. But so does Answers in Genesis, because their pet paleontologist is Gabriella Haynes, and she wrote what might be one of the worst pieces on Archaeopteryx that has ever been written. And it's not just me saying that. It's a bunch of other young Earth creationists who recently wrote an extensive rebuttal that made pretty much all the same points I made when I reviewed her quote-unquote paper in their blog that they call a journal. Is there, remember, is it paleo entomologists? Are they, a, are they a problem all of a sudden? Sorry. Answers in Genesis had two guys that were two geologists, Andrew Snelling and another guy, I think his name is Paul Garner. And they were both writing articles about uh, Acanthus dega gunari. And one of them said that its legs were obviously designed for walking because they were fully developed and, and able to carry the body out of water. When the other one said that it was purely designed for swimming because the legs were difficult to interpret as load-bearing apparatus. They were purely designed for swimming. So they're contradicting each other completely All right. in the Gunter, same magazine, just two or Gunter, three years apart. Did the because same the thing issue is the blind story. fucking bias. They have to support the conclusion no matter what the evidence implies. Gunter did the same thing in this article. And at one point, too, he said something that is just boldly wrong and can't be supported by any any table of like reported hominin brain case sizes that I've seen in the past 10 years. Right. Like he says there's a clear gap in the brain case size of Australopiths and Homo. Right. It doesn't matter which Australopith you're talking about. It doesn't matter which which member of Homo you're talking about. It is overlap all the way down. All of it. Late Australopithecus overlaps with Homo habilis, which overlaps with Homo erectus. Some of Homo erectus even overlaps with the biggest brained Australopiths, right? Like there is no gap there. There is not a morphologic gap that any of these guys can point to that separates out Homo and Australopithecus into clear categories because that transition was such a smooth, smudgy gradient. And so, and this stunned me, his solution to that was to just say that there was, Ah, there is a gap. There just is one. And it's like, <laughs> sir, but where? Where are you? Where, like, it's what? the Dr. Banjo fallacy. The Dr. Banjo fallacy, right. But it's like, even then, you can't even point to, to a gap. Like, I'm not kidding. The overlap is already there. There's not a gap to fill. Well, there's <laughs> like, a gap between me and my parents. There, there's always a gap. You can just say whatever you I mean, want. We joke, but like Stephen Meyer explicitly defended that argument in Darwin's Doubt. Because he said, I know people, you know, I'm going to say um, arthropods, for instance, like, oh, where are the transitional arthropods? Well, anomalocarids, opavinia. Oh, well, where's the transition between those? It's like, well, some of those have been filled in, like Kalinchia. Oh, but now I've got you now. There's another gap. You're right. He explicitly defended that argument in Darwin's doubt. It blew my mind. But even then, you guys, like, that's what's so important. Because here's Oshelopit's brain case size here. Here's my hand. Then here's Homo habilis and Homo rudolfensis, and then here's Homo erectus. There's overlap between all three of those organisms. So where is the brain case gap? It literally doesn't exist. This isn't even a fill in the gap because there's a new gap. There literally isn't one. 
Yeah, but if you just don't talk about brain case size, then you don't have to worry about it. Well, that's all they had. Brain case size is all they had is something that could separate Homo and Australopithecus, and there's not a gap there. So no, they've got to either accept the Australopithecus and Homo clearly or... human. We just can't decide on which one's which. None so, of them can. None of them yeah. can. Which is but, itself evidence that there is really no gap to speak of, because right. if if you come to a fossil assemblage and all of the members of this whatever lineage you're looking at are so smooth that you cannot draw a line between the words that you want to use in anything but an arbitrary way, then it's very obvious, I think, to anyone who looks at it for more than about 30 seconds that there really is no line to be drawn. There's not a real line between Australopithecus and Homo. It's just a convention. That's it. And, you know, conventions are fine. There's lots of conventions. I'm using English. English is just a whole bunch of conventions. That's great. But to pretend that that's something objective about the universe is completely insane and laughably ignorant or laughably dumb. What was the phrase that Gunter used? Embarrassingly dumb. Embarrassingly dumb. I would say yes, that that is in fact embarrassingly dumb, Gunter. I got a couple more comments I got to read. I'm sorry to have to be the YouTuber on this, but people are doing this, so I have to read it. Uh, Zikatar the Immortal offers five dollars. Thank you, and the uh, and his message is. Uh, thank you for thank you all for bringing down the hammer that I've always felt was too heavy to lift alone on those too ignorant slash arrogant to be worthy of listening to. And I got to mention, by the way, since they said arrogant, somebody when they when they read this uh, you know, on Reddit, apparently there was an article when this guy posted this article. One of the earliest comments are are uh, that that those two, meaning me and Erica, are the most smug, patronizing, insufferable dorks. Involved in the debate, and I wish Dork. I could feel offended at that, but I'm actually kind of proud. Okay, I got That's called a er Erica scientist one time, so I get it. You know, Erica is my go-to example of like a really patient, unoffensive creationist debunker. <laughs> That's why I was so shocked that That's, this yeah, was true. angled at, at me and Arn. I was like, "Good turn. What did I do to you?" <laughs> what well, they're just they've got no I mean, they're so desperate. Like the desperation is just mounting and mounting and like you can smell it wafting over from yeah. Seattle. Yeah, mm -hmm. I got to read a couple Actually, more I, comments sorry. before we get back to the prime thing here. PhD Tony offers $5 Australian and says, "Speaking <laughs> of mistakes, does anyone else think that uh, reading creationist material is a poor life choice? I mean, it's kind of how I make some of my money. So uh, maybe, but I kind of have to. I got you. And then there's one more from, I don't know, some some foreign language I can't recognize. Uh, so that is Amharic, and I believe it's Rehugwichwa Nekihawichau. Sorry, Nekihawichwai, which is as close as I'm going to get in, because look, I don't read the Amharic Abu Gita. I had to look it up. Okay. I was just going to say, I've made those exact noises when stubbing my toe. <laughs> uh, creationists want to lie about biology to fraud people politically. Theocrats yes. often make uh, ethno ethnostates religion. Uh, mass, hallucinogen mass hallucinogenic fraud. Okay. And I'm going to get to see, I, I think there is one more paid comment I've got to read before we jump in back into the, the primary thing that we're supposed to be reading. Here's another one. Uh, Nestlick 20 offers $10 and says, Discovery Institute be like, we need someone knowledgeable about the Cambrian to talk about the Cambrian. Oh, Beetle Guy? Yeah, let's have Beetle Guy do it. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. And then PhD Tony offers another uh, $10 Australian. It says, science deniers claim that they have read and properly understood scientific literature. Their evidence is they say so. There is no peer review, no formal assessment, no real world application. Yep, thank you for that. And have I caught up? No, there's two more. Uh, uh, Zell offers $10 with no question or comment. I just really appreciate you guys carry on. Uh, and then MP offers $20 Australian. Thank you. Ruben Monzo offers $5 Australian and says, you need ID to get a driver's license, a passport, uh, enter a bar to get a job, etc." ID is a vital component to any function in society, playing the joke on ID being intelligent design. Okay, now that remind I've read that... Remind me, though, do you need ID to get bread? Because I heard that once. Is that true? What? I'm dunking on the 45th president of the United right. States. Oh, he okay. said that once. He's like, you need an ID to get bread. It's like, have you ever been to a grocery store? I've center? never heard of that. <laughs> so then while defending uh, science against pseudoscience, he said that we should, uh, Erica and I, should have limited our commentary to critiques of that that portion of Genesis apologetics and not mention 
Uh, any other alleged controversies that often come up with that, oh, like really not mentioning additional evidence, uh, like you know, the, the evolution of feathers and so on. And he accused us of ranting about how stupid religious believers are and how wonderful enlightened scientists are. But we don't do that. Yeah, I feel I like Eric, that. I feel like that's. I'm a very always young pointing one. out. I'm always pointing out that uh, that the pioneers of evolutionary theory were all Christian. And that yeah. some of the best champions of evolution in science are still Christian. Are Christian right now. And yeah. there, there are people of every religion in my own department that studies human evolution, like for a living. Like, come on, this is they, this is why their us versus them is so freaking weak. Yeah. They need it's the angry problem. atheist to trigger the tribal mentality to prime people to ignore the, yeah. all of us. Yeah. And at, it's, at it's, the it's, same time, there are also scientists who are Christian. And who dismiss or distort the data deceptively, like misrepresenting and misdefining the neo-Darwinian theory of macroevolution, for example. Because remember, this guy, Gunther, says that he's skeptical of the neo-Darwinian theory of macroevolution. Have any of you guys ever heard of the theory of macroevolution? <laughs> Outside no. of this These particular article. Words. Can't say that I have. They need these buzzwords. First of all, they will never call it anything but Darwinian. They will never stop using that term because they need it to be uh, a, a, a prophet, right? They need uh, a prophet. They need it to be a religion. They need it to be that kind of a thing so they can Wait, denigrate it. You don't have a Darwin shrine where you pray to Darwin? I do not. Yeah. Oh, man, I've been doing this all wrong. <laughs> Dapper I'm actually came up with shrine. a great... Um, Dapper, do you, do you remember the... I, I can find it because it's like it's on my um oh my gosh it was so funny Dapper came up with like a like a a, a parody on um on the the, the prayer uh, but it's like about Darwin it's very funny oh I'm, yeah you stand three 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 and you're good so this guy this guy Gunter belongs to an organization of fellows who are determined their whole agenda is to undermine mainstream science from within you know exclusively for religious reasons. Yet, so, this from guy within, that, right? They this guy says that right. Erica and I, and the rest of y'all, and all our other deplorable ilk, are the <laughs> ones that are guided by prejudice and bias. Religious faith is a bias by definition, but hey, Gunter, I came to my position by trying to minimize or eliminate bias, how mu however I could, as much as possible. So, I am not guilty of that accusation, sir. I have found my Darwin prayer. The fact that he got so mad about like us going off topic, I don't care, didn't ask. Like, I, I it does not matter to me that Gunter is upset about that. Like, it's not your video, just fast forward it, my brother. Like, no one is forcing you to sit here and watch the whole thing. It's, it's, oh, and I don't know if you guys saw, but he whined the beginning that I go by a pseudonym online. Like, he was like crying about the fact that How I, how dare you. That I don't put my last name. How dare you not just dox yourself, Erica? Come on. Right? right? I was like, when when you have people like Gunter who are going on having psychotic breaks in their blogs, like it makes me like not want my <laughs> name and workplace to be public. Yeah. Really All sorry. right. Well, I'm, I'm just I'm just tired of these accusations, so I'm going to dox you right now, Erica Yoshiko Hernandez. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Busted. I'm boring. I don't I don't even have a. A pseudonym, uh, you know. I, I don't have cool cartoons like like Erica does. You know, it's just me. I'm just Jackson. Hello, you know. Nice to meet you, <laughs> dude. I think he's. I think he's mad because, like, he. I, I, you know, I say this, and I'm repeating myself here, saying that this all is in my video, but this is all like fresh in my mind because I just finished editing it a while back, a couple days ago. But he says at one point, he's like, "Oh yeah, like because she's anonymous, instead of like the brave ID warriors who have gone so far as to lose their jobs for for admitting <laughs> that they're intelligent." design advocates and i was like oh he's mad that he lost his wikipedia page like that's what this is about he's yep. mad that he had a wikipedia <laughs> mm -hmm. page and he took it away because he's an id proponent like I, you know i don't feel very much sympathy for you gunther not when you come around and, and act like a jerk like and the thing is that's care. not why it was taken away it was taken away because it had no relevance to basically anyone because here's the thing there are lots of id proponents who have wikipedia pages mm -hmm. that is that's not grounds point. for having it taken away that cannot possibly be the reason um, which, by the way, do you want to hear the, the Darwin prayer? The Dar there's a Darwin prayer? Oh, yeah, yeah, Dapper came up with a Darwin prayer. It's really good. Yeah. So uh, basically, I was accused of uh, basically treating Darwin, Darwin as my god. 
in my comments. So because I love to respond to creation's comments because they're the most hilarious comments, I just replied with a Darwin prayer that goes, Our Darwin, who art in the British Museum, hallowed be thy name. Thy evolution come, thy selection be done, on land as it is in water. Give us this day our daily se sexual selection as we sexually select, and lead us not into inbreeding, but deliver us from extinction. Wonderful, Dapper. Lovely. Oh, yeah. th that reminds me. This guy, Gunter, felt it necessary to ridicule my, to question my credibility by calling me out as a Satanist. Now, he's aware that I'm an atheist. So I'm sure he understands that I don't worship a devil. But, of course, I mean, I joined the, the Satanic Temple. I paid for my membership to be uh, in the Satanic Temple because I wanted for political reasons, because I wanted to support their defense of the First Amendment. And so I don't adopt a belief. You know, I basically I, I'm a member of a club, essentially, of, of activists mm -hmm. defending the First Amendment. But he wants and I, he has to have some awareness of this. But he, he he says this to his readers to, I think, give them a misleading impression. Oh, probably. Well, yeah, Why else did you even bring it up since it's not a belief at all? Well, interestingly, he also called all of us atheist YouTubers, which I don't actually think is an accurate description of our channels. Nope. I mean, I've never I made a stitch of content about atheism. A yeah, nor am I. Well, it's, don't it's I don't it. know. It's it's interesting to me. Like he's he's really trying to paint a league of extraordinary evil here, right? Like that's <laughs> that's how this this little article ends. Um, and I don't know. Like I I think that because most of us here are like you know we just make science content. He has to turn everybody into a boogeyman, or else he can't justify being a huge jackass about it. So at least what to his the audience, he insulted me about was it that that he said that I said something ridiculous and that you amazingly agreed with it. We're talking about young earth creationists who think that the world is only 6,000 years old and the argument that they're making about these, uh, about these fire pits and everything. And I was trying to explain how, when, when you, it just may look like ground to you, but if you know, if you've done, if you, if you have some training in the area, then you'll realize, okay, well, this, this is a Permian exposure or this is Cretaceous or what have you. Right. So if, if the, if, these young earth creationists are imagining that only what a couple thousand years ago, maybe that somebody set up a fire pit. They don't understand how we're, we're searching for, we're recognizing that the, these fossils are from this period or that period or whatever. And these people erect these, uh, the, these, these fire pits on top of them. Right. But, but he, he came up with this entirely different interpretation. I'm not sure where his misunderstanding was. He certainly didn't realize that we were talking about young earth creationists and their argument. Well, because he's not a young earth creationist, but he took massive, he's not a young earth creationist, I should say, but he took massive offense to this because he makes this exact same argument. But like, again, I want to reiterate. How could he make the same argument he's making fun of me for making? I, I don't know. I don't know how he can do that. And I also don't know how it's possible that in, a, in an article that's meant to really like smugly parade around the mistake that he feels is extremely important, right? In one, one, uh, discussion topic within an enormous video within a series of videos on a, <laughs> on a, a young earth creationist movie that was categorically wrong on just about everything it talked about. But he wants to talk about this one thing, let him have it. But if I'm making a dunk on somebody, right, if, if I'm sitting down and I'm trying to, to really tear them to shreds, you bet I'm going to be careful about the mistakes that I might make in that video so that they don't come back and, and bust my chops for it. But Gunter makes mistake after mistake after mistake in this thing. He botches the Povener argument. He botches the understanding of the current, current literature with regard to this stone hut in the first place, which no one thinks is a stone hut right now and hasn't since the 1980s. And he botches the entire point of the contemporaneity of Homo habilis, Homo erectus, and this proposed uh, butchered bone and the, the nature of the, the timing of these stone huts, if they were in fact stone huts. All three of these things are imperative to the argument that he's making, and he blows it. He just blows it. Um, and so I don't, I don't know how he can get away with being so smug about it when, when he's made so many large errors. And like, it doesn't help that he, he acts like a, you know, like a jerk when he's doing it. So it just makes it easier for us to take him down another peg. Like, I, and I feel less bad about it, to be honest. Yeah. Well, he he said that um, he he predicted that we would find some way to whitewash this. Right. Yeah. Like, um, 
you, you, Gunter, so here's, just, here's because, the thing. just because you can't admit your mistakes doesn't mean other people can't admit theirs, right? Yeah, and I, don't, and I'm, I don't have a mistake to admit in this case. No, so, yeah, this one's so on me. Gunter called me out specifically and wants to know whether I will admit defeat after having read his article or whether we will whitewash this or move the goalposts or more, more likely, you know, cover up our incompetence. And what he did, the, the defeat that he's talking about specifically, he quoted me. If you are a fan, if you're a creationist and you watch this series as long, that I've made, show me something, anything they said in this whole series that is an actual fact that we can bullshit was actually true, that hasn't already been disproved and refuted, but it's an actual fact that is supportive of their position that hasn't already been shown to be a lie. And I don't think that any creationist watching this, I don't, I don't think they're going to. I, they're, they're not going to respond to that because they already know and already don't care. They don't want to know what the, they don't, they, they believe what they want to believe. They don't care what the truth is. So did this guy meet my challenge? Did he show an actual fact that is positively indicative of and or exclusively concordant with the creationist position over evolution or mainstream science. Well, Did he do no, that? No, no. He, he didn't show, he didn't even show, he wasn't correct on the fact he was trying to show. He wasn't correct on if that fact was correct, applying it. And then he wasn't even correct in taking that fact, assuming it was correct and applying it to the larger worldview. It was an 0 for 3. I think this. the problem actually even goes deeper because one of the problems that I have with intelligent design where I think they actually lose compared to younger creationism, which is hard to do, is that they don't actually have an idea that could be supported. All they say is at some times in the past, in some instances, God did some kind of tinkering, right? Mm -hmm. At least when you come to young earth creation, it's like, well, we have this idea about kinds and that can make testable predictions, which it can. It turns out that all the testable predictions falsify kinds, but at least it can make them, right? Like there's at least conceivable categories of evidence that could indicate that young earth creationism were true. With the bland ID that the Discovery Institute puts out, like there is not, I couldn't even conceive of something that would indicate that they're right because they don't have enough of a position to have such an idea that they could be right. There's nothing there. It's just a bunch of hazy mush that says, well, I don't like evolution. So maybe God created what? The phyla? Did he also then separately create the ape species? Like, it, it's all just a well, haze. Of yeah, we called him out specifically for that in uh, in, in Dave's videos. Uh, both In the first uh, uh, video that we did on... on uh, I actually think it was the Meyer video. Um, we talked. We pointed out how... Meyer talks about like, okay, you know, yeah, as you said, Dapper, maybe God created the phyla in the Cambrian. Okay, so nothing in the Cambrian is related to the late Ediacaran animals. Right, even like, forms that are the same. Yeah, or, or right. extremely similar. exactly. Yeah. Because Claudina and several other animals actually cross the boundary, right, the boundary from yeah. the Ediacaran into the early Cambrian. And so, so it's he like, he wait killed a them all and then recreated the same one. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. The Ediacaran was just... The Ediacaran was just God's like alpha test, and a few bugs made it into the Cambrian. But then, you know, as he was going through his Cambrian beta testing, he found and squashed those particular bugs. So just don't worry about it. But in general, creationists hate taking about uh, talking about Ediacaran fauna. I actually just filmed yesterday a reaction video to some Muslim creationists, and they botched this too. All creationists need for the Cambrian explosion to be a literal explosion of all the animals. They can't. They don't want to talk about any animals prior to that. Was one of them support Ahmed. Yeah, yeah, that one. Yeah, oh, I have, I have I a did series on those coming out too. Wait, no, is nice. that wait? No, no, he's not finding truth, is he? Uh, I don't think I, so. He just goes okay. by his name, I think. Oh, sorry. Okay, well, yeah. I, I did yeah. a debate with a with a Muslim apologist named Finding Truth uh, on the Cambrian explosion. Oh, yeah, yeah. In I which we that. never actually talked about the Cambrian explosion. Yeah, no, they just they're they have. <laughs> I, no, I had a formal I mean, debate with with Sabur Ahmad once. I saw that, and was, and, and and the audience was coming oh, up right. to me during the break to tell me the things that he was misquoting. You know that that he was that he was, and of, of course he was. You know, yeah, and there, there was one thing that he said that he, that I wasn't talking about because he used a he used a term that that I didn't describe it as in my book. So obviously, I mean, I described it actually twice. I just didn't use that term. I don't remember what it was, but it was two different places in the book. But I wasn't refer I wasn't sure what he was referring to because I I don't use that term. So apparently, all he did when he said that he read my book was do a control F, and he didn't see that. So he said I never spoke of it. 
At one hmm. point in one of Gunter's articles, he does the exact same thing. He he talks he cites a paper of someone who says that the 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 pelvic inlet or the pelvic complex of Australopithecus looks like distinct from Homo, right? Like because he's trying to defend Luskin. This is one in one of the ones he was trying to defend Luskin. I click on the link, I go to the paper, I unlock the paper, and it says, while there are some characteristics that are that are uh, basal in this pelvis, it overwhelmingly looks like Homo. Like, it looks like genus Homo, yeah. right? So, like, the, the quote mining with Gunter as well is off the charts. Um, he, he does it at many opportunities, um, and it's quite shameful. All right, so we I think we've covered this part, at least the part where he was attacking me and Erica. Uh, and and his his call out to me about whether I I need to concede defeat to fucking what dude? Or did you, you you defeated me by not meeting my challenge? You have. Let me just repeat that. Hey Gunter, show me any actual factual evidence, any body of objectively verifiable facts that are positively indicative of and or exclusively concordant with the creationist position over evolution or atheism, or however you want to do it. Show me a fact we can both verify to be true so that we can both say, yeah. And I've got all of that for evolution, all of it. I mean, the very fact that we are morphologically and phylogenetically uh, uh, classified as apes, that is a fact that is concordant with evolution and kind of contradicts creationism straight up. I mean, the molecular phylogeny of living primates, all of all of the, the work done on that, the, the ERVs, everything, all of that, the 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 base similarity of ninety eight percent or ninety six, however you count it, all of that are facts that are discordant with creationism and support evolution. Can you show me fucking anything that supports the ridiculous claims in your favorite folklore? Can you do that? I don't think you can. I don't think anybody can. I'll I'll give a, an easier challenge here because I I have to go here in a couple minutes. But I I wanted to, so I'll leave it to uh, you guys to to finish with the stuff that doesn't have to do with directly looking at Arn. But I'd like to hear one thing at all that was correct in the Genesis Impact movie, even like if you watched it, Gunter, and you said it was so good and so well researched, not without errors, of course, but over overall on the whole, a pretty good piece. What did they say that was right? I, I would like to hear that. That would that's my question for you, Gunter. Um, and as I as I said to you in our emails, I very much look forward to in in my upcoming video on the subject uh, taking your Stone Hut's argument out behind the barn, shooting it and burying it alive. Um, because I'm actually I'm, emailing I'm, with this guy. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Um, and you know he he's he's like, oh, thanks for being a good sport, and it's like, okay. All right. Like, well, sorry, I had got this assignment from the hires up. Uh, yeah, I guess. I mean, I've I've got all the sources now in the in my possession almost. Once once I once I have the last one from Jackson, I'll have my entire Thanos glove ready to annihilate Gunter on this. But you know, I mean, it's it's just like don't pick fights that you that you know you can't win is really what I'm saying here. Um, well, and they decide I, they win. They they pronounce that they've won them, knowing that their viewers will never look at anything that the opposition ever says. Oh, sure. And then yeah. we can rest assured knowing that their flock diminishes day by day. I mean, yeah, it gets smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. And um, I just growing feel well and happy knowing that. I, that makes me just, that tickles yeah. me pink, Gunther. And when they, when they declare uh, victory, it's got the same energy as uh, Michael Scott coming into the break room to declare bankruptcy by just loudly proclaiming that he is declaring bankruptcy mm -hmm. as if that means anything. Well, no. it's gotta be at least a little embarrassing to, to put on so many hit pieces and every single one of them is full of so many errors, right? That I would require a level of self-awareness that I don't think these people have. It's the drill. It's the drill meme where he's like, uh, I'm not owned. I'm not owned as I shrink into a corn cob. <laughs> <laughs> well, the right, last sentence here I want is to bring up. Before Fortunately, you, you have evolution news and other media that bring you real science and debunk the debunkers. That's incredible. The Just incredible to me. Give me a break. One other, one other thing I want to bring up is that Professor Dave and I will be on Skep Talk this Monday. Nice. So if yeah, you've got nice. something you want to say to either of us, there's, a, there's a, like 745 or 750 people watching right now. So if you got some, something to say to either me or Dave, Call in. Call in. 
Don't be a baby. Like, th that's what's so irritating about this, too. Like, they're so ready to stomp their feet and throw a big tantrum in, their, in the safety of their blog posts or in the case of some of the YouTube creationists in the safety of their own channel. But they are so lily-livered. They cannot just big boy up and come have a conversation about it when they can't control the mute button. Right. So, I, you know, put your money where your mouth is. Stop being such a baby and, and come with your questions to Aaron and Dave and, and pitch them. You know, got it's, a couple more time. comments that I got to read before we go. So this is Giant Midget. Love that name. Uh, $4.99. It says, love what y'all do. And Jackson, many thanks to you, my friend, for our chat years ago, helping me find my way out of creationism. Um, nice. You are one of the reasons that my channel is worth continuing. Whenever I think about, you know, like, I don't know if it's worth it today. I think about you. I'm going to keep and going. And then Anton Davy Ditus offers $2 and says, go, go, Evolution Avengers. Power to the <laughs> apes. Now we all need superhero costumes. <laughs> also, yeah, anti-creationist super pals. I think we might be something like I, that. I, also, I, not, I like, not an ape. Not an ape here. Just, just put that out. Oh, of course, Dapper. Okay, guys, I, I do have to go because I have a dinner to make Bye. and I, I got to get out okay. of here. But thank you. This thank is you, blast. Erica. I've all got to right, hang yeah. out for another minute because I got another chat to read. But thank you so much. Uh, Christopher Sanford offers 10 pounds and says, hurrah. Some of my favorite science collaborators in one stream. What a treat. Just to say I learned so much from your content and have fun while doing it. Thanks. And is that the last chat? That is the last chat. Everyone, thank you so much for participating in this. Dave, looking forward to our show yeah, on Monday. Should be fun. All right. Anybody else got anything to say? Thank you I mean, for having hey, me. Yeah, check out everyone here's channel. Yes. We all got stuff. Check out Jackson. Check out Dave. Uh, check out, I guess you can go to my channel if you, I don't know, like dinosaurs or something silly like that. <laughs> All right. Hasta la bye-bye. Bye, everybody. Bye.